گیا ماں کا انتقال ہو گئے ہو گئے یتیم سیدا کے لال سیدا کے لال ہو گئے غم سے ہیں نڈھال سیدا کے لال ہو گئے افسوس آج بچوں سے مادر بچھڑ گئی آنکھوں کے آگے بچوں کی دنیا اجڑ گئی افسوس آج بچوں سے مادر بچھڑ گئی آنکھوں کے آگے بچوں کی دنیا اجڑ گئی وقت آ گیا کیسا پر ملال سیدا کے لال ہو گئے غم سے ہیں نڈھال سیدا کے لال ہو گئے سیدا کے لال سیدا کے لال ہو گئے غم سے ہیں نڈھال سیدا کے لال ہو گئے دکھ یاد ہے ہر ایک مصیبت بھی یاد ہے فضا کو سیدا کی وسیعت بھی یاد ہے دکھ یاد ہے ہر ایک مصیبت بھی یاد ہے فضا کو سیدا کی وسیعت بھی یاد ہے کس سے وہ کہے اپنے دل کا حال سیدا کے لال ہو گئے غم سے ہیں نڈھال سیدا کے لال ہو گئے ہو گئے سیدا کے لال ہو گئے یتیم ہو گئے یتیم ہو گئے دروازہ سیدہ پہ گرا ہو گیا غزب ہائے شکستہ پہلو بنا موت کا سبب دروازہ سیدہ پہ گرا ہو گیا غزب ہائے شکستہ پہلو بنا موت کا سبب روئے چیخ کر شیر ذل جلال سیدہ کے لال ہو گئے یتیم غم سے ہیں نڈھال سیدہ کے لال ہو گئے سیدہ کے لال ہو گئے یتیم غم سے ہیں نڈھال ہو گئے یتیم ہو گئے روتے ہیں ماں کے سوگ میں حسنین زار زار چہروں سے ہائے داغ یتیمی ہے آشکار روتے ہیں ماں کے سوگ میں حسنین زار زار چہروں سے ہائے داغ یتیمی ہے آشکار عشقوں سے ہے تر پھول جیسے گال سیدہ کے لال ہو گئے یتیم غم سے ہیں نڈھال سیدہ کے لال ہو گئے 
सैयदा के लाल हो गए यतीम हो गए यतीम सैयदा के लाल हो गए यतीम हो गए यतीम बच्चे जो माँ के सोग में होते हैं बेकरार शेर खुदा को होती है ये फिक्र बार बार बच्चे जो माँ के सोग में होते हैं बेकरार शेर खुदा को होती है ये फिक्र बार बार अब करेगा कौन इनकी देखभाल सैयदा के लाल हो गए यतीम गम से हैं निडाल सैयदा के लाल हो गए सैयदा के लाल हो गए यतीम गम से हैं निडाल हो गए यतीम हो गए साबित कदम है रहना हर एक इम्तिहान में आवाज गूंजती है ये फिजा के कान में साबित कदम है रहना हर एक इम्तिहान में आवाज गूंजती है ये फिजा के कान में रखना तुम मेरे बच्चों का ख्याल सैयदा के लाल हो गए यतीम गम से हैं निडाल सैयदा के लाल हो गए यतीम सैयदा के लाल हो गए यतीम गम से हैं निडाल हो गए यतीम हो गए यत महफूज अब खामोश हो घुटने लगा है दम फखरी कले जा फटता है अब रोक ले कलम महफूज अब खामोश हो घुटने लगा है दम फखरी कले जा फटता है अब रोक ले कलम दिल के दर्द को आंसुओं में ढाल सैयदा के लाल हो गए यतीम गम से हैं निडाल सैयदा के लाल हो गए सैयदा के लाल हो गए यतीम गम से हैं निडाल हो गए यतीम हो गए यतीम हो गए यतीम नारायण सलवार माशाल्लाह बहुत ही अच्छे अंदाज में नौहा पेश कर रहे थे जनाब अहसन परवे साहब मजलिस के सिलसिले को मसाइब के सिलसिले को आगे बढ़ाने के लिए मैं गुजारिश करता हूँ मोहतरम सैद मैसम काजमी साहब से कि वो रौनक फ्रोज मंबर होकर आप सबसे खिताब फरमाए बर मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद सलवाद
ماشاء اللہ کافی تعداد اچ مومنین تشریف فرماؤ ایک دفعہ اپنے گناہ دا ازالہ بخشش دا وسیلہ اور زینت مجلس تصور کر دیا ہویا پورے شوق و شغف دے نال بلند آواز اچ ہم نوا ہو کے آل محمد دی پاک ساتھ تے ایک بلند جئی سلوات پڑھو پاک موزمہ سین دے ایام ازائن دعا ہے رب العزت مولا پنتن پاک جتنے بھی تشریف فرماؤ مولا ہر جائز شریح حاجت قبول فرماؤن مولا جتنے بھی بیمار ان بیماری کر بلا دا واسطہ شفائے کاملا جلاتا فرماؤن مولا جتنے بھی مومن کسے دکھ درد پریشانی مقتلائن مولا انہ دیا پریشانیہ دور فرماؤن جتنے بھی بے اولاد نے مولا صالح اولاد عطا فرمائے درود پڑھو محمد والے محمد دی پاک ساتھ آئے دے اس پاک ذکر دی تدا پاک موزمہ سین چاند نیچ ایک ربائی تو کر رہے ہیں پوری توجہ دا طالب ہاں عرض کر رہے ہیں سرور کو اپنی جان سے پیاری ہے فاطمہ بہت ہی ذہین اور فتینی تمام میرے سامنے قدیمی ازادار تشریف فرماؤ کوئی توزی کوئی تشریف دی ضرورت نہیں عرض کر رہے ہیں سرور کو اپنی جان سے پیاری ہے فاطمہ ہر دم علی کے قلب پہ جاری ہے فاطمہ کیا بات ہے عرض کر رہے ہیں سرور کو اپنی جان سے پیاری ہے فاطمہ ہر دم علی کے قلب پہ جاری ہے فاطمہ شفقت خود اپنے نور سے کر کے جدا اسے حالق نے اس زمین پہ اتاری ہے فاطمہ درود پڑھا محمد علی محمد پاک ساتھ بس فضائل تحصہ مکمل کرن دے واسطے ایک قصیدے دے دو شیر بہت جلدی دے نال اور بہت تھوڑا ذکر مسائب اور پھر میں قبلانوں دعوت حتاب دیا درود پڑھا محمد علی محمد پاک ساتھ در زہرات آکے آدمی انسان بندائے در زہرات آکے آدمی انسان بندائے در زہرات آکے آدمی انسان بندائے کوئی پوزر سٹندائے کوئی سلمان بڑھدائے در زہرات آکے آدمی انسان بڑھدائے درود پڑھو محمد والے محمد دی پاک ذاتے پہلا شہر اس قصیدے دا کوئی توزی نہیں کوئی تشریح نہیں پوری توجہ دا طالب عقیدت نال جکنا پوندائے ہر حال اندر تے عقیدت نال جکنا پوندائے ہر حال اندر تے بہاری ڈیمنی پوندی اے داڑی نال اندر تے دہاری دیونی پاؤں دی اے داڑی نال اندر تے تول بندہ مکمل صاحب ایمان بندائے در زہرات آکے آدمی انسان بندائے درود پڑا محمد والے محمد پاک ذات تے آخری شیر اس کا سیدھے دا شرف حاصل ہے بس آل محمد دے گرانے کو شرف حاصل ہے بس آل محمد دے گرانے کو خدا نے بیج کے سائل اے دسیا ہے زمانے کو خدا نے بیج کے سائل اے جسیا ہے زمانے کو اے جو کچھ بھی کریں دے او قرآن بڑھدائے در زہرات آکے 
आदमी इंसान बन जाए कोई बुजर सटाए कोई सलमान बन जाए करे जाहरा मोहम्मद वाले मोहम्मद पाक जात इस्लाम दे दरबारों विच मैं वत्य आखना इस्लाम दे दरबारों विच मैं दोवा मावा दिया दे मवाजने दा एक बांध शुरू कीता है इस्लाम दे दरबारों विच हो दो बीबियां खड़िया रहिया एक दी वो नबी दी दूजी दी वो अली दी हिण दोवे मावा दी आ मैं बात प्यार दा बहुत सोना इस्तकबाल कीता है मां हुसैन दी वक्त आख अकबर दा बाबा रंगल इस्लाम दे दरबारों विच दो बीबियां खड़ियां रहियां एक दी वो नबी दी दूजी दी वो अली दी हिण दोवे मावा दी आ एक त्रे गनटे दूजे नौ गनटे निर्वाण कुटे दिया रहिया जदा मौत आई हिण दोवे जख्मी विच कब्र दे रोंदिया रहे आ बहुत सोना इस्तकबाल कीता है दो दे दो मिनट बस तुर्गे मोहम्मद इस दुनिया तो तुर्गे बीबी हती जदल कुबरा इस दुनिया तो किस्मत दरबार दे विच गिनना ही त्रै घंटे 47 मिनट तो बाद मेरी साइन हक्कल मार के आह दिए चाचा सलमान मैं थक पई हां चाचा सलमान मैं थक पई हां हाय हुसैन हाली वली नबी दी दी मेरी साइन 93 डी बाबे दे विशाल तो बाद जिंदा रहे एक लम्हा भी सुकून दा नहीं मिलया मजलूम ते 12 14 एक दूजे तो वद के हिन लेकिन इना 12 14 दे विच दो हस्तियां ऐसीया इन जिन्ना दे उम्मत जिंदगी दे विच दर ठंडे कीते न मेरे ते सवाल करो केड़ियां केड़ियां पहले पहले मोहम्मद दी अकली दी जहरा दूजा मेरा छेवा इमाम हजरो कमलिल्ला मैं को इज्जत सैदा दी कसम में जदा बतूल दा दर ठंडा कीता ने ना ते मुसलमान मेरी साइन दे दर दे बाहर आके आ दे ने अली को बाहर भेज असा दी बायत करे मेरी साइन इना दे पास देख के आ दे ने अली बाहर ना आसी तुसा दी बायत ना करसी इना नौकरा को हुक्म दित्ता है जो लकड़ियां जमा करनीया शुरू करो इना लकड़ियां जमा करनीया शुरू कीतिया ने ए वता दिन बतूल असा एक और मौका देने आली को बाहर भेज असा दी बायत करे मेरी सन इना दे पास देख के आ दिन कोई शर्म करो हया करो ए उधर है जिथे फरिश्ते आवण हार रुक के इजाजत मंगण हा कोई शर्म करो हया करो ए उधर है जिथे नबियां दा सुल्तान नबी आवे हा रुक के इजाजत मंगे हा ए आहदा इजाजत मंगे हा ओ ते मंगे हा अजा मेरी साइन दे जुमले खत्म नहीं होए इसने दरवाजे नु आग लाईए मेरी साइन दरवाजे दे दूजे जानब खड़े हन अजा अंदा दरवाजा जलया हा ए आहदा मैं इसने मजीद जलन दा इंतजार नहीं कर सकदा ए आगे वधिया इसने पैर दी ठोकर मारीए मेरी साइन दरवाजे दे दूजे जानब खड़े हन दरवाजा मेरी साइन दे उत्ते टिका है मेरी साइन दरवाजे दे थले जान के हक अल मार के आ दे नम्मा फिजा में को संभाल मेरा मौसन शहीद हो अम्मा फिजा में को संभाल मेरा पहलू जहमी हो हजरो कमलिल्ला मरहबा 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 अजा मोहम्मद दी कब्र दी मिट्टी नहीं सुकी हाई मदीने दे लोग इकट्ठे होए ने इना मीटिंग च कीती है इना एक दरहास तैयार कीती है जिदे उते मदीने दे 11 सरकरदा लोगा ने दस्तखत कीते ने ए दरहास किन के मेरे मौला दे कोल आए ने 
علی جا بہادر امام علی جا صابر امام رنے امیر مولا دے پاس دیکھ کے آدھے نہیں یا علی اساں کو زہرہ دا رومن برداشت نہیں ہوں دا زہرہ کو آخ اچھا نہ روے میرے مولا انہ دے پاسے بیخ کے آدھے نے تو ہڑے گیارہ لوگاں تو علاوہ میں کو مدینہ دا ایک بندہ بھی دسا چھڑو جڑا اس گال دی دواہی دے وے جو اساں زہرہ دے بین حویلی تو باہر سنے اے آدھے نے یا علی جنہ اساں کو بیج جائے نا آہدے نے علی کو آخ زہرہ دا رومن بند کراوے نہیں تے اساں کو زہرہ دا رومن بند کرانے دی جاہ جائے حجر حکم اللہ میرے مولا انہ دے پاسے ویک کے آہدے نے جدہ انہ اگال میرے مولا دے نال کی تھی نا میرے مولا جلال دے بھی چاہے نے آہدے نے میں اوہو علی ہیاں میڈی تلوار بھی ہوئے میڈا جلال بھی ہوئے کافی دیر تو بعد میرے مولا سملے نے انہ دے پاسے دیکھ کے آہدے نے اچھا انہیں کرو ادھر ہاس میں نو دیو چاہ میں تو ہڑا کاست بان کے سائن دی حدمت دے بچ وینا میرے مولا ٹرپے نے در ہاس لے کے حویلی تطہیر دے اندر پہلا قدم رکھا ہے میری سائن نے ڈٹھا ہے میری سائن بستر موت دے لیٹے ہیں میری سائن حق کل مار کے آدھے نے او دائیو او مائیو میں کو اٹھاؤ چاہ میرے سر دتا جا گیا ہے میرے حاکم آ گیا ہے میرے مولا میری سائن دے پاسے دے کے آدھے نے زہرہ میں دے تیڑے دے تظیمہ او دنیا حتم کر چھوڑی آئیں جدوں دی تو کھڑ کے نماز نہیں پڑھ سکتی میری سائن میرے مولا دے پاسے دے کے آدھے نے یا علی اگ یاد رکھو اگر اج میں تو ہاتھی تعظیم دے واسطے عزت دے واسطے دا اٹھی قیامت تک اور تا اپنے شہران دی عزت نہیں کرنی میری سائن نے میرے مولا دے ہاتھی چھے ترہاس ٹھیٹھی ہے میری سائن میرے مولا دے پاسے دے کے آدھے نے یا علی اے تو ہاتھی چھے کیا آئے تسی پریشان کیوں میرے مولا میری سائن دے پاسے دے کے آدھے نے زہرہ باہر باپ دی امت آئی بیٹھی آئی میری سائن آہ دیئے یا علی انہ نو میڑا بابا ہم یاد آیا اتنی دیر تو بعد میرے باپ واسطے آئے نے میرے مولا فرمائے نے زہرہ مکان دے منیو آئے تیڑا رومن بند کرا منا آئے نہیں جدہ اے گال میرے سائن دے نال میرے مولا کی تھی نا میری سائن میرے مولا دے پاسے دے کے آدھے نے یا علی میڈی گواہی دیتی ہوئی یا میڈے بین تیز حویلی تے باہر قدا نہیں سنے کسے نے جد اے گال میری سائن نے میڈے مولا دے نال کی تھی نا میڈے مولا میری سائن دے پاسے دے کے آدھے نے میری گواہی مننا ہوں میڈا موسن کیوں شہید ہوئے میڈی گواہی مننا ہوں تو دربا اور دے وچ کیوں بن جیا ہوں میڈی گواہی مننا ہوں میڈے گواہ کیوں جٹلا ورنا میری گواہی مننا ہو تو دربا اور دے بچو کیوں حالی بلے آن جدہیں گال میڈے مولا انہیں میڈی سائن دے نال کی تھی اے میڈی سائن میڈے مولا دے پاس سے دے کیا دی یا علی میں کو ڈسا اچھا میں انہا لوگ انہوں کیا جواب دیا میڈے مولا میڈی سائن دے پاس سے بے کیا دینے سارا تو جان تیڑے بابے دی امت جانے میڈی سائن میڈے مولا دے پاس سے دے کیا دینے یا علی انہا لوگ انہوں جواب دے اچھا میڈا رومن بند نہیں دنیا تو ٹور گیا ہے میڈی ماں بھی اس دنیا ہوں تو ٹور گئی نہ میڈا کوئی پیرا ہوں نہ میڈی کوئی پین یا علی میڈا رومن بند نہیں ہو سکتا میں کچھ دنا دی میں مانا یا علی میں بڑی پڑے دا دار اور تا یا علی دی چڑھتی میں کر دے وچ رو ساں اور آدھو سی میں دیا نو نال لے ساں پترا نو نال لو ساں یا علی تو بنجے نہ بنجے تیڑی مرضی اما فضا ہو دی کندا اولا بنا کے میں جنگلا دے وچ رو ساں میں پہاڑا دے وچ ر میڈے مولا آئے نے انہا لوگاؤں دے نال وعدہ کیتا ہے وعدہ کرن تو باؤد میڈے مولا مدینہ دے باہر سوا دو میل دے فاصلے دے ایک تحرک دے نال ایک جنپڑی چا بڑھائی ہے جے کو تاریخ دے وچ بیت الحزن آ دے نے میں کو عزت سیدہ دی قسم اے پہلا امام بارگائی جدی بنیاد میڈے مولا انہیں رکھی آئی دی ہویا میڈی زین میڈی زین کر دے وچ رو ویا رات ہویا میری سائن دیا نو نال لویا پترا نو نال لویا اما فضا دی کندہ اولا بنا کے جدہ بابے دی قبر دے کولو لنگیا بابے دی قبر نو ہاں دے نال لگیا بابا تیڑے بعد تیڑی امت میں کو روان نہیں دین دی او بابا تیڑی بعد تیڑے امت نے میڑے دے ظلمہ دے پار ڈا چھوڑین بابا تیڑے بعد تیڑی امت میں کو مدینے نی راون دین دی سلے اللہ جناب محسن قاضمی صاحب ماشاءاللہ ہمیشہ کی طرح 
بہترین انداز میں مصائب بی بی سیدہ پیش کر رہے تھے مجلس کے سلسلے کو آگے بڑھانے سے قبل میں آپ سب سے ملتمس ہوں کہ جیسا میں نے آپ کو بتایا ہے کہ مولانا شیخ مرزا عباس علیل ہیں تو ان کی اور دنیا میں تمام مومن و مومنات جہاں کہیں بھی بیمار ہیں ان سب کی صحتیابی کے لیے صحت کاملہ و عاجلہ کے لیے ایک مرتبہ باوا سے بلند سلوات اور آپ سب سے التماس ہے کہ ایک مرتبہ سور حمد اور تین مرتبہ سور اخلاص کی تلاوت فرما کر آج کے اسپانسر کے مرحومین سیدہ شاہدہ شیرازی سیدہ زاہد زائدہ بی بی شاہ بنتے غلام حسین شاہ اور تمام ارواح المومنین و مومنات کے لیے اس سال فرمائے بسم اللہ الرحمن درود بھیجے گا محمد والے محمد کبھی حسن کو گلے سے لگا لیا رو کر کبھی حسن کو گلے سے لگا لیا آغوش میں حسین کو گاہے بٹھا لیا آج شب شہادت ہے اور اسی کے نسبت سے میں دو بند صرف آپ کے سامنے پیش کر رہا ہوں کہ رو کر کبھی حسن کو گلے سے لگا لیا آغوش میں حسین کو گاہے بٹا لیا رخصت کیا کسی کو کسی کو بلا لیا اور پڑھنے کے واسطے کبھی قرآن اٹھا لیا کہتی تھی گاہ بچوں سے منہ اپنا موڑ کے کل سونے گھر میں سونا ہے بستی کو چھوڑ کے سن لو وسیعت میری اس وقت یا امام فضا سے میرے بعد عدالت سے لینا کام ہوشیار فاطمہ کی امانت سے صبح و شام دو بیٹیاں دو بیٹے ہیں بس اور خدا کا نام اور میں نے بڑے دکھوں سے یہ سب بچے پالے ہیں حق کے حوالے تم یہ تمہارے حوالے ہیں ہمارے بیچ مولانا سے ظفر عباس نقوی صاحب موجود ہیں میری ان سے التماس ہے کہ وہ رونق فرض ممبر ہو کر آپ سب سے خطاب فرمائے ان کی آمد کے لیے ایک مرتبہ باوا سے بلند سلوات اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللہین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلاۃ وسلام و تحیت و الکرام النبی العمی العربی القرشی المکی المدنی الحشمی صاحب کعبہ حسین محبوب رب المشرقین والمغربین 
جد الحسن والحسين النبي الحرمين والإمام القبلتين والرسول الثقلين الذين سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرض بأب القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين المنتخبين المنتجبين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين روحي وارواح العالمين للتراب مقتمه الفضا واللعنة الدائمة الباقية على عدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاسب حقوقهم أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتبارك وتعالى في محكم كتابه ومتقن خطابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله استفاك وتحرك واستفاك على النساء العالمين يا مريم اقنتي لربك واسجدي واركعي مع الراكعين فضح الله للي الذي مسائي سلوات محمد وعلى In honor of Hazrat Zahra Salaamu Alayhi Wa Sayyidi Nala Salawat Alayhi Wa Muhammad Wa Alayhi Wa And to hasten the reappearance of our awaited Imam Rasai Dawud Laab Salawat Alayhi Wa Muhammad Wa Alayhi Wa Muhammad Wa Alayhi Wa Before we uh, start, can I request you all to read Fatiha and Ikhlas three times for Marhuma Siyeda Shahida Shirazi and Marhuma Siyeda Zayda Vibisha and all the Marhumin of all those who are present here today. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah 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 Alhamdulillah <laughs> And for all those who are sick, and particularly Hujat al-Islam al Muslimin, Mala who is supposed to come to the Majlis, Messiah, Lord, Lord, Salawat for their health and well being, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil faraj. Verse number 42 and 43 of Surah Ali Imran, uh, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> speaks about Hazrate Maryam alayhi salam. In particular, the part that I want you to Focus on is Wail Qanatil Malaika. The angels said to her. So, one of the uh, things to, that we would like to discuss today, just briefly, and we'll see how that relates to Hazrat Zahra, you know that. A few weeks ago, I came for this majlis, so I wasn't planning to come today, so I have to bring something different. Um, and you'll see how that relates to Hadate Zahra Salamullah Inshallah.
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the angels spoke to her, spoke to Maryam They spoke to her directly, they addressed her. And they said to her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you and he's purified you and he's chosen you over the rest of the women. And then the angels said to her that for this status that Allah has given you, you should uh, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do ruku and sujood. So first of all is this particular point that is very important to know that does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only speak or do the angels only speak to the prophets or do they speak to other people as well? Is there revelation on other people who are not prophets? Do we have examples of that from Quran al-Kareem? So this is very important to know. So this is one example of that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Maryam alayhi salam through the angels, in other words, revelation. Wahi came down onto Maryam alayhi salam. <coughs> then we have another, so this is one example of Wahi on Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. Then when we come to Surah Maryam, we see that there's another Wahi as well. This Wahi is to tell her, this one that is in Surah Ali Imran, was to tell her about her status. This second Wahi, which is mentioned in Surah Maryam, is about her son and the fact that she's going to have a son. Because if that was not the case, Marhum, Allahumma Talib Juhri Radwan Allah Ta'ala he used to say that if that was not the case, then every single woman who didn't know who the father of her child was would claim that he's a prophet. If that wasn't the case, if there was no revelation to back it up, everybody would, who didn't know who the father was, they would say that my son is a prophet because Maryam alayhi salam had a son without a father. So it was imperative for there to be revelation to back it up so that you know that it's not the same as all those other people who have sons and they don't know who the father is. And that revelation came to her, telling her that you're going to have a son. And then to confirm that fact, that baby also spoke to testify the character of his mother as well. Because this is something that doesn't happen. Three hour old child doesn't speak. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the power to speak and for him to say that I'm the prophet of Allah. Now it's astounding and amazing that Muslims would believe that Isa salam can be three hours old and he can speak and say I'm the prophet of Allah but the holy prophet doesn't know he's the prophet for 40 years. Right? That's one example of wahi revelation which came down on Maryam alayhi salam who wasn't a prophet. Now, we have to know that somebody might bring a counter to this. So there has to be a reply. No? Yes, There's, there can be a counter. That yes, Maryam is not a prophet. Salamullah alayha. But she is ma'asuma. This ayah tells us, Taharaki, awla of Afuka, ulamat mufassirin of this verse are clear in light of what Ayyama alayhi salam told us. That she is ma'asuma, she is free of sins. So maybe wahi only comes on that lady who is ma'asuma. 
If this was the only example, perhaps we could limit it to that. But we've got more examples. In Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that revelation, angel comes down onto Sarah alayhi salam as well. Who's the wife of Ibrahim and the mother of Ishaq. And this revelation is also about the fact that you're going to have a son. And she is so surprised at the fact that, that she's going to have a son that she slaps her face. The ayah tells us that she slaps her face. Astounded that how can I have a child when I've become so old? And my husband is even older than, than me. But nevertheless, revelation came to her. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Qasas, وَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَّ مُوسَىٰ That we did revelation, wahi, on Ummah Musa, on the mother of Musa alayhi salam. This wahi is to tell her to protect her child. Put him in the box and send him on the river so that he is protected. All of these wahi and revelation is to human beings. We got one more incidents of wahi as well. Surah number 16 of Quran al kareem وَأُوحَيْنَا إِلَى النَّحْلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did wahi on the honeybee. Not even a human. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did wahi on the honeybee. To tell the honeybee which plant it is that it needs to go to. Which plant it is that it needs to go to so that it can produce the, get the pollen to produce the honey. Even this is through wahi from Allah. Wa'awhayna, the word wahi is used in the ayat of Quran. So we found out through all of these examples. That it's not just the prophets who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does wahi. Whomsoever he chooses. Because he's Bukhtar. He is Qadir. We say, Wahua ala kulli shayin qadir. Everything is possible with him. So he does the wahi on whomsoever he chooses to do wahi on. Why I gave you this long introduction and how does this, all this story relate to Hazrat Zahra Salamullah Alayhi Wasallam Salam Alayhi Wasallam Muhammad Alayhi Wasallam Now there's a word that you're all familiar with. I'm sure that you all heard this word you know the meaning of this word is muhaddith the one who narrates hadith the one who relates hadith is called muhaddith okay from hadith is muhaddith the one who narrates the one who tells people about hadith or the one who collected hadith the famous amongst our school of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salatu salam, Muhammad ibn Yaqub Kulani, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi, who collected Al Kafi, his muhaddith, and so on and so forth. But you know also that in Arabic, even just a change of Fatha and Kasra and Dhamma will change the meaning of a word. So this is muhaddith, this you all know. You're all familiar with. Everybody has heard the word muhaddith from hadith. There's another word, and it's very similar, but it has a different meaning. And that is muhaddath. With fatha on dal. Muhaddath. What does muhaddath mean? 
Muhaddith means the one who narrates hadith. Muhaddath is the one upon whom revelation comes down. Muhaddad is one who, upon whom revelation comes down. It still relates to hadith because whatever that person is going to tell you, it will be hadith. Right? The muhaddith is the one who tells you the hadith that's already been said by the ma'fum alayhi salatu wasalam. Muhaddad is the one who what he tells, he or she tells you that it will be the hadith itself because it's directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that thing is directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the titles of Hazrat Zahra salamullah alayha is Muhaddatha. One of the titles is Muhaddatha. Not Muhaddatha. Muhaddatha. Upon whom? Revelation came down. Upon whom? What he came down. <clears throat> so what's the background? So this is the meaning of Muhaddatha, the one upon whom Wahi revelation came down. What's the background to this title? How did Hazrat Zahra Salamullah get this title? What occurred in her life for her to receive this title. <clears throat> so we know what is this title and how is this, how valuable it is and how particularly it relates to these days and nights of the Shahada of Fazate Zahra Salamullah. So, this narration is from Hazrat Sayyidina Zaid ibn Ali ibn Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam, who was asked about this title. <coughs> so, Zaid, son of Imam al Sajjad alayhi salatu wasalam, who is known as Zaid al Shaheed. This hadith is from him. What does he say? He says, Samaitu Aba Abdullah Yaqul. I heard Aba Abdullah, in other words, Imam al Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Inna ma summiyat Fatima muhaddatha yanna al malaikata kanat tahbitu min al samai fatanadiha kama tanadi maryam. Bintu Imran. He says, I had my nephew, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, say. What did he say? He said that Fatima is called Muhaddatha. Why? Because the angels came down from the heavens and they said to her, like they said to Maryam Bintu Imran. What did they say? فَتَقُولُ الْمَلَائِكَ The angel said, يَا فَاتِمَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاكِ وَتَحَّرَكِ وَاسْتَفَاكِ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ الْعَلَمِينَ The angels came down to Fatima Salamu Allah and they said that, O oh, Fatima, Allah exactly is the same as this ayat. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is has chosen you and purified you and chosen you over all of the women of the world. <clears throat> so somebody asked Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, that's what's the difference between this choosing of Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam and Hazrat Zahra. So Imam alayhi salam replied that Maryam Sayyidatun Nisa al Alameen fi zamaniha in her time. And Fatima Salamullah alayha Sayyidatun Nisa al-Alameen fi kulli zaman in every time. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad
مساء ون مو صلوات على محمد وعلى محمد And this was one revelation that came down to. But what's the context of this revelation? When did this happen? And from where did this revelation and what is this about? So Imam al-Salam told us that after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam passed away, Everybody abandoned the household of the Prophet. Imagine that, I always say this, and even though obviously I'm reading this in Fazail, but this is the greatest Masai. There's no more Masai than this. That imagine that the greatest human being to have ever lived has died. And he's left behind just one daughter. And instead of people coming to offer condolences to her, they abandon her and then later they come and burn down her house. So because everybody's abandoned her and she feels lonely because she's overwhelmed with the grief of her father. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down Jibra'il and the angels. And Jibra'il and the angels give her condolences over the passing of her father. And during this time, whether it's 75 days or 95 days or more or less, during this time, angels come down with revelation and it is written down by Amirul Mu'mineen So about this, that which is written down, what is that? Imam Sadiq tells us, وَقَالَ Imam Sadiq لِأَبِي Basir. Imam Sadiq says to Abu Basir, وَإِنَّ عِنْدَنَا Lemushafe Fatima. With us is Mushafe Fatima. What is this? Wama Yadri Ma Mushafe Fatima. And what do you know about what is Mushafe Fatima? Yes, Ibn Rasulullah, you tell us, then we'll know. Fihi Mithlu Quranikum Hadha Salatha Marat. Is three times longer than the Quran. Mushaf Fatima is three times longer than the Quran. Wallah ma fihi min Quranikum harfin wahid. And there's nothing in it that is the same as the Quran. It's totally different. He's mentioned the Quran to give you or give us a example about how long it is. But there's nothing in it which is similar to Quran, it's something else. وَإِنَّمَا هُوَ شَيْءٌ أَمْلَاهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَوْحَى إِلَيْهَا in He says that this is in it are those things which were revealed to Fatima alayha salam during that time. So now here there's some issues that come about as a result of the word Mus'haf and what does it mean? I'm sure you all heard many times before from people who are not followers of Ahlul Bayt that you guys, you have a different Qur'an. A few weeks ago in our masjid in Birmingham, we had a group of uh, our brothers from a different school of thought visit the masjid to, for a tour and question and answer. So there were teenagers from the local 
school. And one of them asked me, he said that we heard that you have a different Quran. So I said to them, there's the Quran on the shelf. It's there. We didn't hide it. We didn't hide it. Nor did we put any different ones because we knew you were coming. It's the same Quran. And I said, most of them, you'll see, are published in Saudi Arabia. So we didn't, we didn't even publish them. It's exactly the same Quran. So why the confusion? There's two reasons sometimes for a person to be confused. Sometimes people don't know. They genuinely don't know. They're ignorant and that's why they're confused. And sometimes people, they know, but they don't want to understand. They don't want to understand. Obviously, you can't do anything about people who don't want to understand. But for those who want to understand or some person who doesn't know or somebody who got from our own community was confused by somebody asking them that question. That you have a different Quran. So now, in Arabic, istilah, in terminology, modern Arabic, the word Mus'haf is used for Qur'an. In Arabic, if you go to Arabic country, or you read in the Arabic textbooks, they'll use the word Mus'haf for Qur'an. <clears throat> but Qur'an itself never refers to itself as Mus'haf. Qur'an itself refers to it as many things, for example, in Quran, Quran itself is referred to as Kitab. Right at the beginning, Dalik al Kitab is referring to Quran. Or, for example, Quran is referred to as Furqan. We have a surah, Surah Al Furqan, is referring to Holy Quran. And various other words. But in the whole Quran, the word Mus'haf is not used for Quran. It's used in Arabic language, but it's not used in the Quran itself. Right? So that means istilahan, we can call the Quran so we want. But the Quran itself, what it calls it, that obviously cannot be used for something else. And if you go to search, what does Mus'haf mean? comes from Sahifa. And we know that Quran tells us that there was Sahifa in the past as well, before Quran. Other books are also called Sahifa. You read in Salatul Eid, Surah Al-Ala, Suhuf Ibrahim wa Musa. Suhuf is Jama of Sahifa. And Mus'haf is from Sahifa. And it's referring to a book because it comes from Safa. Safa means page. And, so, and Mus'haf is that which is between the two covers. So it's not uh, specifically for Quran. It can be used for and has been used for other books as well. So here if Mus'haf is used, it doesn't mean it's the... doesn't necessarily mean that it's referring to Quran. It can be referring to any other Sahifa. And of course this is a Sahifa because it's been revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And previous Sahifa had different attitudes towards what those Sahifa were for. For example, Torah was a Sahifa about laws. Ahkam. Zabur is also Sahifa, but there's no Ahkam in Zabur. Zabur is Sahifa of Dua. That's why Sahifa is called Zabur Ali Muhammad. Because Zabur is also, Psalms is also a book of prayer. And Injil, New Testament, this book of redemption is talking about grace. There's no law and there's no prayers. And Quran is all of these things. Quran is all of these things. It's law and it is prayer and it is. Redemption, all of those things are mentioned in Quran. 
So Sahih found, oh, first of all, so Mus'haf can be referring to other books other than Quran. And secondly, it has particular purpose. So Ya Ibn Rasulullah, what is in this Mus'haf e Fatima, which is different to Quran and it's so long, how would we find out? So one day, somebody comes to Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu And they ask him a question. And Imam alayhi salam asks one of his khadim, one of the people in his house, to bring the mushaf. So he brings this mushaf. Now imagine it's three times longer than the Quran, so it's a big, long text. And the Imam alayhi salam opens it on a specific page. And he reads out the answer to that person's question. He reads the answer to that person's question. That person, he's got his answer, he's gone. You know, there's all, there's all kinds of different kinds of people in the time of the Imams and even today. There's one kind of person, they're only interested in the answer. If you give them the answer, that's it. They don't need to know anything else. There's other kinds of people like me. If you give them the answer, we want to know where does the answer come from? What's the reference? Where did it come from? Where did you bring this answer? So, on, so, on. so this person, he gets his answer and he's gone. There's other people sitting next to Yab, Imam al salam like me. They say, Yabna Rasulullah, we never saw this book before. And do you need a book to answer questions? Do you need a book to answer questions? We only believe in that person as the Imam who answers the question before the question. The difference between Mujtahid and Imam is that Mujtahid answers your question once you ask the question. Imam answers your question before you ask your question. Right? So he says, Yabna Rasulullah, what's this book? And do you need a book to answer questions? Imam says, no, I don't need any books to answer questions. Because knowledge is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who has been appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his knowledge is also, also from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then this person says, oh, what is this book? So Imam alayhi salam says, this is Mus'haf al this is Mus'haf Fatima and in this book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Fatima salamullah alayha during that time between the passing of the Prophet and her own passing the knowledge of all the events of the past and the events of the future and the knowledge of all the kings of the past and of the future. And the answers to those kinds of questions that that person is all mentioned in this Mus'haf Fatima. And the end of all those and the destruction and what's going to happen to our followers and what's going to happen to our enemies. That's all mentioned in Mus'haf Fatima. <laughs> So this is the book which has nothing because of course Quran doesn't tell us in any clear way what's going to happen in the past or in the future or knowledge of the kings or so on and so on. No, Quran has a specific purpose. That purpose is of guidance. Therefore only that much history has been mentioned which is necessary for guidance of human beings. And of course it is also necessary to show that Qur'an by itself is not sufficient. 
by itself is not sufficient. Because that person, that person who said in the presence of the Prophet, who said, Hasbuna Kitab Allah, that person themselves, only a few days after that, on the Thursday, that's the before the Prophet passed away. That person said, the book of Allah is sufficient for us. Just a few days after, as soon as the Prophet passed away, and Hazrat Zahra Sallallahu came to claim her right for Fadak. And she recited verses from Quran Kareem, telling them that this belongs to me on three counts. I mentioned this last time, we'll not repeat. On three counts. That I have possession over it. That I am entitled to it as inheritance. And I'm also entitled to it as khums. And regarding inheritance, Sulaiman inherited from Dawood. Dawood is a prophet and Sulaiman is also a prophet. And Zakaria prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yarithuni wa yarithu min Ali Yaqub. Give me a inheritance, the one who inherits from me and from all of Ali Yaqub, who are all prophets. Because why? Inni khiftul mawali min warai. Because I'm fearful of these people around me. These relatives of mine around. So, in response to that, they mentioned a hadith of the Prophet. Yesterday, you said that the book of Allah is sufficient for us. Today, to counter the claim of Hazrat Zahra, you mentioned a hadith. And imagine, Musa'ah Salawat ala Muhammad wa If there's something that's concerning me directly, concerning me directly, then isn't it reasonable for me to expect that my father is going to tell me, he's going to tell me about this, that I'm leaving this for you? And this you don't have any rights of. Because it's concerning me. It's concerning my inheritance. So I reasonably expect that my father is going to tell me that this is for you and this is not for you. If there's a hadith about inheritance, then wasn't Rasulullah going to tell Fatima first? How is it reasonable for me to accept that he told somebody else? But he didn't tell Father. But he didn't tell Fatima that this is about your inheritance. And you don't have any share in it. And he didn't even tell Fatima. Alayhi the same Fatima for whom he says, Fatima to Badatum Minni. That she's a part of me. So how is it possible that he told uh, somebody else? about that hadith, but he didn't tell Fatima that there's no inheritance for prophets. So to counter that, just one final thing, because obviously this point has come, so it's important for us to know. To counter that, Hazrat Zahra Alaha, what did they say? They said that the prophets don't leave behind inheritance, nor do they inherit. Whatever they leave is sadaq. This is worded very carefully, because they know that sadaqa is haram on. Sadaqa is haram on the progeny of the prophet. So. Hazrat Zahra Sallallahu brings witnesses. Obviously, she brings Amirul Mu'mineen. 
and then she brings Umm Ayman. Umm Ayman. Who's Umm Ayman? Umm Ayman was a maid bought by Hazrat Abdullah, the father of the Prophet. Umm Ayman was the maid bought by Hazrat Abdullah, father of the Prophet. And the Prophet received her in inheritance. And then Hazrat Zahra received her in inheritance. So when she brought Umm Ayman, she wanted to show that the Prophet left behind inheritance. And he also received inheritance. And Umm Ayman was a proof that the Prophet received inheritance. And he also left behind inheritance. And then she came and said to the people in the court, two people who were sitting there, that, did you hear the Prophet? say about me that there's no woman more truthful than Umm Ayman. The Prophet said. So they said, yes, we heard the Prophet say this. Yes, we heard the Prophet say that there's no woman more truthful than Umm Ayman. Then she said, I testify that Fatima Salamullah Aleha is speaking the truth. I testify that Fatima Salamullah Aleha is saying the truth. She is saying her claim is true. So they said that witnesses are not sufficient. Ali and Umm Ayman, one man and one woman. But Umm Ayman had got testimony from two men about her truthfulness. Umm Ayman had already got testimony from two men about her truthfulness before she made her statement. To tell people that, look, these two men testified that what I'm saying is true. That what I'm saying is true. And finally, at the end of that sermon, She says that I know that you're not going to give it back to me. I know that you're not going to give it. But remember there is a day where the judge will be Allah. Where the judge will be Allah and the case will be presented by Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on that day, there would be no chance for injustice. Because Allah is the best of judges. And that's a reminder to all of us, every single one of us, that even in dunya, if I can deceive somebody or take somebody's rights, there's a day when Allah is going to be the judge. And nobody can escape from that day. Nobody can escape. I always laugh when some oppressor or dictator or murderer dies and they put the headline that so and so escaped justice. There's no escape. There is no escape. Yes, in dunya somebody will get punishment. But there's no escape. The message of these ayyam, why it's so important to commemorate these, these days of Hazrat Zahra is there's no escape. There's no escape. There's no escape. Because there's going to be a day where God will be the judge. And everybody has to go to that day. It's not optional. Every year they will go to that day. And on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decide.
and he would decide using the testimony of my own hands and feet against you. That you deny all of these things, but your hands and feet will testify against you. That's the reminder. That before I die, I make sure that I fix up and sort out all the things in my life. Because on that day, the judge will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his uh, judgment will be fine. So that's why it's important to commemorate these days. To know that the first instance of injustice was done after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the household of the Prophet, to the al of the Prophet. And that's why Allah Mahilli Ta'ala writes that that's why in our usul deen after Tawheed we have Adl. Why? Adl is a sifat of Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In usul deen we have Tawheed and we have Adl. Even though all of the other sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are discussed in Tawheed. Right? All the other sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are come under Tawheed. Why Adl is mentioned separately? Allah Mahilli Radwan Allah Ta'ala says, because after the Prophet, there was no Adl with the family of the Prophet. After the Prophet, there was no Adl with the family of the Prophet. And it was angels who came down to console Hazrat Zahra, alayha. no humans came to console her. No human. This is the Messiah. This is the Messiah of today. Today is Shabbat Shahada. This is the Messiah of today. That no humans came to console Hazrat Sahra Salamullah. Nobody came to say to her that we are aggrieved like you are aggrieved that your father passed away. Nobody came to say to her that we are here to help you and support you. They came to Amir al salam and they said to him that Ya Ali tell Fatima either to cry in the daytime or to cry at night. <laughs> Hazrat Zahra Sallallahu used to go and cry in Baqi. One day she came back in the middle of the afternoon. Amir al-Mu'minin salam says, Binta Rasulullah, you came back early today, he said. She says, Ya Abul Hasan, that tree under which I used to sit and cry, the Muslims cut it off. It's too hot in Medina to sit without shade. Allahu Akbar. Abul Hasan just tarakh ke niche, bed ke rote te, us tarakh ko kaat tiya. Medina ke dhuk mein baitha nahi jata. Ajur ko mein Allah. Madine ke dhup mein Baiht nahi sakta koi Ali ne Baiht ul Husn bana hai Fatima ja kar roya karti Rona bhi Muslimano ko gawara nahi Rote rote ya ayam Guzar gai Shikasta pehlu hai Bacha shaheed ho gaya یہ سب کیوں کیا ایک سخت جملہ ہے مجھے معاف کر دیجئے گا سخت جملہ ہے فاطمہ یہ کہہ رہی ہیں اپنے عمل سے بتا رہی ہیں کہ یہ جو پردہ ہے نا اس کے لیے میں مرنے کے لیے تیار ہوں اپنا پردہ بچانے کے لیے نا تر و دیوار کے بیچ میں آئی ہے کہ اس پردے کے لیے میں مرنے کے لیے تیار ہوں اور سوال پوچھ رہی ہیں کیا کنیزان سیدہ زندہ رہنے کو تیار ہیں زندہ رہ کر یہ پردے کو بچانا ہے کنیزان سیدہ کیا اس پردے کو زندہ رہ کر بچائیں گے فاطمہ تو مرنے کے لئے تیار ہے پسلی شکستہ ہونے کے لئے تیار ہے محسن کی شہادت پیش کرنے کے لئے تیار ہے ایک اور جملہ کہوں گریہ کرنے کے لئے کافی ہے 
حسن اور حسین کا مقام بہت بلند ہے لیکن کہنے دیجئے کہ حسن حسین وہ بیٹے ہیں فاطمہ کے کہ جو زندہ ہونے کے بعد شہید ہوں گے محسن اس شہید کا نام ہے جو دنیا میں آنے سے پہلے شہید ہو گیا اللہ دنیا میں آنے سے پہلے شہید ہو گئے یہ دن گزر گئے انہی ٹوٹی پسلیوں کے ساتھ انہی زخموں کے ساتھ اس بچے کے مر جانے کے قلق کے ساتھ فاطمہ سارے کام کر رہی ہیں گھر کے بھی کام کر رہی ہیں عبادت الہی میں بھی کوئی کمی نہیں آتی کوئی شکایت کا جملہ کسی سے نہیں آتا بس شکایت بابا سے کرتی ہیں بابا صبت علیہ مصائب لو انہا صبت علیام سر نلیہ بابا ایسے مصائب پڑ گئے آپ کے بعد کہ اگر دن پہ پڑھتے تو رات میں بدل جاتے اور اگر اگر پہاڑ پہ گر جاتے تو رضا رضا ہو جاتے یہ معصومہ کا جملہ ہے معصومہ کا جملہ ہے مبالغہ نہیں ہے پہاڑ پہ گر جاتے رضا رضا ہو جاتے کیا مصیبت کے پہاڑ گر گئے کہ فاطمہ جیسی سابرہ کو یہ کہنا پڑا یہ دن سارے گزر گئے علی کو بلایا آخری دن آ گیا علی کو بلایا کابل حسن آپ سے وسیعتیں کرتی ہوں میرا جنازہ رات کی تاریکی میں اٹھائیے جن سے میں ناراض ہوں انہیں میرے جنازے میں شریک نہ ہونے دیجئے گا آپ ہی غسل دیجئے گا آپ ہی کفن پہنائیے گا آپ ہی قبر میں اتاریے میرے بچے بہت چھوٹے ہیں کیجئے کہ میرے حسین کے پاس ہمیشہ پانی رہے گا
علی نے حسن سے کہا کہ جا کر کے باہر دیکھو آنکھوں کو بند کر دو سروں کو جھکا لو فاطمہ بنت رسول اللہ کی سواری آ رہی ہے اجرکم للہ بس تمام کر دیا میں نے عزیزو فاطمہ بنت رسول اللہ میدان محمد داخل نہیں ہوں گی جب تک کہ میں اپنے پیٹے کے رور رونے والے اس پر چاہنے والے اس پر اپنے جان فدا کرنے والے ایک ایک کو جنت میں داخل نہ کر دوں رسول اللہ پوچھیں گے فاطمہ سامان شفاعت میں کیا لائی ہیں آپ فاطمہ چادر کھولیں گی دو کٹے ہوئے بازو ایک کہوارا میدان محشر کامپ جائے گا فاطمہ کہیں گی میں اپنے بیٹے عباس کے دو بازو اپنے ششماہے کے گہوارے کو سامان شفاعت لائی ہوں اسی پر اپنے بیٹے کے رونے والے ایک ایک کو جنت اللہ ولانت اللہ للقوم الظالمین والسیعلم الذین ظلموا ایام قلب ینقلبون انہا لله و انہا الہ راجعون ماتم